Thanks for checking out the Bosch and Roll channel. If you want to see me play your deck, hang out with me and the amazing Bosch and Roll community in Discord, access to my lists and sideboard guides before tournaments, book an individual coaching session, or just generally want to support what's going on here, check out the Patreon and YouTube membership options. For the finest Magic the Gathering apparel on the market, use code Bosch and Roll for 10% off your order at coalesceapparel.shop. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. If you want to play what I'm playing, use my affiliate link to support the channel while you shop for cards at tcgplayer.com and play any deck anytime on Magic Online with a cardhoarder.com loan account. Thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today at the request of Patreon subscriber Ronnie, I'm trying his Red Green Urza Saga Brew. This deck is kind of the heir to old Jund Saga in Modern which is a deck that I only got to play once back when Luris was legal. And I believe I went undefeated in that tournament. I was the modern seat in a team event and the deck was great. And a lot of the bones are still here. We obviously don't get Luris and we don't get black cards because we're just red green. But it's low to the ground. Dragon's Rage Channeler, Ragavan, and Tarmogoyf all backed by Hyper efficient removal, four bolt, four unholy heat, not messing around here. Renin six, not a joke. It's got Baseju, Jetmer's Garden, Sokinzon, and Urza Saga to really go off with. And speaking of going off, look at the top end of this deck. There's a one of Restoration Angel to go with your one of Kiki Jiki. So you have Kiki combo in the deck, tied together by Traverse the Olvenwald that can tutor for these pieces later in the game. And then you've got Titania, Protector of Argoth, chilling at this at the top end. Titania combos with Zurin Orb as a kind of one-two punch to end a game. You play Titania, she regrows a land from your graveyard to the battlefield. Whenever a land you control goes to the graveyard, create a 5-3 green elemental. You can just huck your whole board into two life at a time and get a 5-3 out of each one. And that's usually enough to end a normal game of modern. This might look like a skinny top end of a deck, just Young Pyromancer and then a couple combo pieces, but Urza Saga plays as the top end of this deck pretty well. Looping it with Ren and Six, you're rarely going to run out of things to do with your mana. Having Jetmir's Garden and Sokenzin to pay out your lands. I think this deck is pretty well constructed. We'll keep our eye on the Kiki Resto stuff. I think that that is the, the cutest thing in this deck. The rest of the deck is here for business. It's just a bunch of stuff to tutor with Bobble. This many artifacts, you're pretty likely to have Delirium early and often. You're going to be bringing the beats with your creatures, backing it up with removal. The business end of this deck is pretty serious. And then these last four slots or so could, could be almost anything. It could just be four season pyromancers if you want to focus on that, but I like leaning into the Traverse the Open Wall toolbox and doing something cool with that since we have it. No companion for this deck. Uh, we've broken all the rules for those, and the one we'd want is banned anyway, as I mentioned in Luris. I do wonder if three mountain, one forest is the correct split of basic lands. Because forest can cast traverse to get mountain, but mountain can't traverse to get forest if you have a one lander. You don't need Mountain if you're under Blood Moon. You need Forest if you're under Blood Moon. I understand that Kiki Jiki's triple red, but every land in the deck makes red except for Baseju and the Basic Forest. I guess Urza Saga. But all the other mana producing lands are red. Dragon's Rage Channeler and Ragavan being red one drops is pretty important though. And we are a Saga deck, which Moon decks would want to shut down with Moon. Like sometimes low to the ground red decks, moon decks don't even bother with the moon because it doesn't matter. Being also a saga deck is pretty awkward. I think I'm going to trust Ronnie on the basic forest, but it might be an easy switch to just go two and two on the basic lands. But if we have to, ever have to mulligan a hand because it has forest instead of mountain and we can't play our ragavan, I'm going to be really disappointed. My eyes on that, but I'm going to run with it for now. And this is. Rule Saga, let's go check it out. On the draw in round one, got a DRC into Tarmogoyf start. I'm going to keep it. No companion from my opponent. Atria Triumph, okay. 
I suspect rhinoceroses are in my near future. We can use Bloodstained Mire to get a stomping ground. Get myself as set up as possible here. Wooded Foothills can get my basic if I want to start saving life points. We're in there. Arid Mesa. I don't think that's normally in Rhino decks. Why would they need to fetch a Plains? Unless this is a five color Rhino deck. Oh, it's not Rhinos. Okay. Uh, Scape Shift, maybe? I got Ren and Sixth. Urza Saga. Ooh, this is tough. I could Bolt Ren right now while the getting's good. I could just Saga Tarmogoyf also. I think I'm doing that. Goyf also pressures Ren. And if this is the Rug Scape Shift deck or four or five color Bring to Light Scape Shift deck, the best thing you can do is get under them with a creature and start bashing. Because they're full of remands and stuff. Uh oh, am I going to get to Ferried? Okay, at least four colors in this build. The Arid Mesa, I was right to question that. Yep, there's Teferi. Not saying the Goyf. I think I want to drop Teferi, or drop Tarmogoyf and Bolt Ren and Six this turn. Teferi doesn't matter right away. I'll get a Basic Mountain, play Goyf, and Bolt Ren, which will send Goyf into the Stratosphere. I get an instant and a Planeswalker in the graveyards. A Goyf is 4 or 5 now. That did cost me a Saga activation but I think I'm too far behind to settle into that. Very plussed, so anything could happen here. Resto Angel, hello. Okay, what's in my Saga package? Oh, I want to pursue this. I could make a creature, get Springleaf Drum, use that mana to clear to Fairy. Yeah, I think I do want the Construct. I'll get Springleaf Drum. And I'm going to try to Heat to Fairy right now. Put some pressure on that. Spell Pierce, you got it. Now the question is, do I care about Teferi, or should I bash their face? They're at 12. I actually have them on a two-turn clock here. I'm going in. Attacking their life points directly. Oh, am I getting Prismatic Ending in combat? That's brutal. I'm going to play Viseju and play Pirate Spell Bomb here. Try to make my Construct large. I still have five cards in their hand. That's so many cards. The Fairy and Renin Six, the card advantage just flowing over there. They are no longer on a two turn clock. I'm going to attack to Fairy first. See if I get away with that. They have another removal spell. I can Lightning Bolt to Fairy. Prismatic Ending. I think I just need to draw a card with the Pyrite Spell Bomb. Got to get something going here. And Holy Heat qualifies. They did miss a land drop last turn, which is really bad for Scape Shift. No bolt to fairy. I can pay for a spell pierce with what I have. I can redeploy off a remand. Tap Sacred Foundry and send it. Okay, the board is stable. I would like to find myself a Renin Six. Just found land number five. This could bring delight. Back up to fairy. I hope they plus it. Yeah. It gives me a chance to eat it with unholy heat. It's free and easy one for one. It's hard to do against the Planeswalker. Ooh, Traverse, what's up? I'm going to Heat to Fairy first. And then I'm going to Traverse, which can search for any creature or land. Interesting. I could make the Wild Swing for Kiki Jiki here because I have the Resto. I think I should just get Urza Saga. That plays around removal and counter spells the best. They missed a land drop past the turn again. Four spells in hand. I hope they're shitters like Scape Shift that don't actually work when they're not going off. One, two, three, four. I could resto in the end step if I shock in my stomping ground. I don't think I want to do that. I'll just stick to the, the saga plan. I just had the thought that this could be creativity, but I don't think that it is. None of the cards they've shown me indicate that they are one or the other. They're both five color mountain based combo control decks. I, I think this is scape shift though, not creativity. But maybe I'm just wrong. Huh. That will be in the back of my head kicking around the rest of this game for sure. Okay, Soul Guide Lantern can draw a card. Mishra's Bubble also draws a card. I don't want Zurin Orb. Zurin Orb insulates me against scape shift. 
but I'm now wondering if that's even what they're doing. I'll take Soul Guide Lantern for now. Knock that Arid Mesa out of their graveyard. That way, even if they draw a Ren, they're still going to miss a land drop over it. My land can cast Resto. What are we doing here? There's three mana in the pool. A line binding. Okay. Maybe this is creativity. It's tough to read because. Yeah, interesting. All right. I could draw a card with Soul Guide Lantern right now, see what I get delivered. I think I should fetch first. I'll take this mountain and then Soul Guide Lantern draw card mode. I spike Tarmogoyf, which cannot be spell pierced, both because I have two mana and because it's a creature. Okay, there's mana in the pool. There's Mario Command destroying my creature and looting two. I now think they are creativity. Yep, shit. All right. This read might have come a little too late. I might have gotten a little antsy on the Soul Guide Lantern there. There's now two Archons in the graveyard. Yep. Please don't reanimate spell me. Fable. Okay. There is some danger. Uh-oh. First the Olvenwald. Uh, is there a haste creature or something super helpful here? One, two, three, four, five. I could get Kiki Jiki and attack with two Tarmogoyfs. I'm going to traverse and see what shakes loose here. Kiki Jiki, Season Pyromancer. Is it Titania time? I mean, she's pretty good here. I'm going to grab Titania and then attack with Tarmogoyf. I should have attacked first. They didn't know this second hammer was coming. A no block on Tarmogoyf. Leyline Binding. I'm going to resto the Goyf. Yeah, I should have attacked first. Then we flush out this Binding and resto. Then resto sitting in play. Then I can reverse for Kiki Jiki. Yeah, mistakes were made. They didn't reanimate last turn. And the, the coast was clear. This is the first turn they've had an object in play to it with creativity. They also get to dump two more, but they declined Kiki Jiki's or Fable's ability. Yeah, we're dead. There's only two Archons left in the deck, but that's all they need here. Okay. I guess I'll verify that Archon isn't in their hand, but I think they would have discarded it. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I, I misread that escape shift for too long. I don't know that it changes the matchup. I still did what I had to do, but didn't feel good about it. Okay, Engineered Explosive's great in this matchup. Alpine Moon can name the Dwarf Land. I don't think that's where I want to be, though. Run a Foul and clear an Archon that's in play. Fail stops the Archon triggers on the arrival turn, and then I can deal with them with Heats. Haywire Might, this is not a matchup for you. I don't think this is a Zuran Orb matchup either. Probably not a Titania matchup. Titania is probably better than Kiki Resto, though. As far as top end things to reach for. Because Kiki Resto, it showed me a ton of spot removal and instant speed. It just plays into all of it. I could flip Titania into Fury since I also boarded out the Zuran Orb. My combo's not there. And Fury can mop up their fair plan extremely well. Old Guide Lantern does matter. Pirate Spell Bomb might not. Okay. Uh, Unlicensed Hearse does pressure the graveyard, and they are kind of a graveyard deck. There are builds with Persist and builds without it. I think I'm going to let Soul Guide Lantern and my removal do that work. Oh, but they're also a Ren and Six deck. And sideboarding's hard. Traverse is less important in the current configuration. I don't have any specific top end bullets, it's just more of the same. And Mishra's Bobble can be hers. Okay. I ended up in a reasonable spot here. Uh, I like this. I'm going to keep. Get to fetch and then play Tarmogoyf. And then we're off with Ursa Saga Tarmogoyf. I'm just getting a Sacred Foundry. I don't need Jet Mirror's Garden. I didn't board in my white cards. Better in the deck is something to cycle later. Ren and Six. Is that better than Tarmogoyf? I think I want to put them under the pressure here. Saga, Tarmogoyf, the thing. Tarmogoyf's a lowly 1-2 at the moment. 
Got lightning bolted in the end step. They've got their Ren and Six. Okay. Got some options here, which are play engineered explosives, which is an artifact. Also keeps me from getting comboed out too easily. I don't really need Ren in play. I'd rather advance my artifact stuff. Closes on zero steps on my constructs, but it also makes it so they can't combo. And I would sacrifice two constructs to not get Archon every time. They plus Ren without fetching first. They're not hurting for lands over there. Or they are trying to protect their life total. Aga. Tarmogoyf. Make another token. Bolting the first one in response. That's fine. I think I want Soul Guide Lantern in this spot. Just make sure that their, their engine doesn't get online. Gonna shock in Stomping Ground. That will insulate against getting comboed out this turn. I can bolt the Geeky Jeeky or the, the Goblin or the, the Dwarf or whatever shows up here. I think an extra plus one plus one on my Construct is worth more than fighting their Ren and Six in the graveyard here. Yeah, I don't think that Scalding Tarn is my fight. Okay, they do have a Dwarf. Oh, for the combo. Okay, they fired off Creativity. Gonna Lightning Bolt the Dwarf. I was really aggressive. I shocked in Stomping Ground, like they saw me do it. But I guess with Engineered Explosives in play, might as well make a move. It's not getting better. Oh, good shit. Ren and Six. Buy back Urza Saga. Use Urza Saga to cast Tarmogoyf. Or... I probably don't do that. I should probably leave up my Engineered Explosives to make sure the second wave of the co combo doesn't get me. I'll hold on to Tarmogoyf. But my Bobble lets me hit their Ren for an extra point. Ren is approaching ultimate. I am not interested in that even being a factor in this game. Hard pass. And I kind of like this bobble being in play. Putting my construct out of bolt range. Another mine. And bought back the tarn. Okay, I'll go to my turn. Go a forest. I'm going to ping their dwarf with Ren and try to take out their Ren in combat. Okay, we're in there. Then land Tarmogoy. I'm still holding up two to explode or take a, a token as necessary. Back up Ren. Didn't get a dwarf in mind this time. Not even pretending they're going to combo. I'll make a construct in the end step. This is a lethal attack if they don't do something about it. Other construct. Springleaf Drum and Bobble in my deck. I'll take Bobble. And I'll try attacking with everything. See how this works. Attack my opponent directly. Okay, they're dead. Do I want Prismatic Ending in the deck? It does fight Ren. It does fight the Fairy. But so does all my Red Burn in the deck. Fury does that too. Yeah, I don't think I'm interested in that. I like the configuration I have. I'm going back in. Turn one Ragavan. Don't mind if I do. Turn one Ragavan on the draw against Ren and Six decks, though. Kind of. Thus. I think I'm just going to fetch a Mountain and play my Springleaf Drum. Invest in the future. I've got unlicensed her, so I can keep a Ren a little bit under control. Look at that. Okay. Glad Ragavan didn't just die. I'll drop the hearse now. Or I could play Ragavan. Yeah, I'm actually going to let them ping the Ragavan. Because if they need land drops, uh, maybe this doesn't make sense. But if they ping Ragavan, they lose Ren to Bolt. Just working my, my hand lower anyway because of Season Pyromancer. Rag's dead. Prepared for that inevitability. Lightning Bolt, the Ren. Oh, they could spell pierce this. Okay, I'm going to engineer explosives on zero. And I think I'm going to bolt Ren on their turn. That way, if I have to Veil of Summer, I'm also protected from what they're doing. Playline Binding. Okay, I'll bolt Ren now. Let's see where Binding's going. I expect the explosives is worse for them than the hearse. Okay. 
I was wrong. I'll exile Ren, and then they bind the hearse. Didn't just fire off on Archon. That's good. Bolt. Okay. Season Pyromancer kind of rotting here. Devi Triome. Mountain. They're hitting land drops. I'm not. That's always scary. ERC. All right. Go get them. Dropping the Channeler is fun because it gives me mana, offspring, leaf drum. And if they kill it and think they're safe, they'll be wrong. Destroying target artifact. Uh, Veil of Summer works on this, but it doesn't solve the problem. Guess I'll do it though. If they drop an Archon right now, they have to do it through Lightning Bolt. This is a blue spell. Lightning Bolt into the graveyard. I have enough of that going on already. Cool. My artifact is not destroyed. I did discard two lands and draw two cards. I can Lightning Bolt a token. That moves are being made. No spell pierce. No spell pierce. They have left up blue mana. Bolt the dwarf. Hope this works. I can heat an Archon if this doesn't work. I will have Delirium the bobble. I actually want this land. I hope this just works though. That would be the ideal circumstance. All right, cool, we're in there. Didn't expect that to work. But you know what they say, magic's easy. Mishra's Bobble will give me Delirium. A hearse on top of my deck. My opponent clearly was worried about that one previously. Bobble you. Fable on top. That one's a little annoying. In for three. Let's start clocking this opponent. I like the Unholy Heat, which is why I didn't drop the Season Pyromancer. They tap mana in my end step. I wonder if they're, they have besieged you. There was a green in the pool, then they changed their mind. Table is in. I'm gonna heat the... Yeah, I'm just gonna heat the goblin in the end step. Don't want them to have that. Don't want anything to happen with it. Doing something in response. Lightning bolting my Dragon's Rage Channeler, sure. Versus Saga, slap that right on top. It fits so many constructs in this bad boy. Hearse of Saga. Go in. And I'm going to hearse here. Pyromancer could tap to Springleaf Drum, but unfortunately my hearse would already be gone if I tried that. I'm getting Besejewed. I'll exile Besejew and I guess one of the lands on the way out. And I'll put Stomping Ground into play tapped. These and Pyromancers ready to reload my hand. They can't combo with Engineered Explosives in play. Didn't discard the Fable. They love their hand already. Getting worried about my clock. My computer's been a little laggy since I switched rooms I record from. I gotta get this thing hardwired. Pumping Ground is in play now. The RC. I can play that and still hold up Saga and Engineered Explosives. And if they have creativity off the reflection, I can't stop that. I hope that they don't have it. My plan worked. My plan of clench and hope. Into my turn. Detmir's Garden. Not happy to see that. Tutor for Soul Guide Lantern. Cut off the graveyard half of stuff. And I'll attack for eight. Or not. Or I'll get bound. Dialing my explosives. Okay. Well, in that case, I'll attack for seven instead of eight, and then I'll cast Season Pyromancer. Detmir's Garden, Season Pyromancer. Draw two cards. So Kenzon, not actually a red card. Okay. I'm all in here. If they can, I mean, they'd have to use Kiki Jiki to resolve. Uh, creativity here so it would be they'd need us another creature before they can make an archon and copy it right away and destroying target artifact and target player draws two cards well might as well exile each opponent's graveyard they draw two discard two after that's gone so they could go the reanimator route two archons just hit the bin uh oh if they have persist i'm dead it all right well we made a good run of it team
Sacrifice, Season Pyromancer, Discard Sokens on. Now they get to Bash, take my other card. I'll lose Dragon's Rage Channeler and Fury. Alright, and then they get to also attack. Yeah, alright. We're dead. I made a good show of that, but they did, uh... They navigated it extremely well. On the turn, I did have the Graveyard Hate lined up. They're... Faithless Looting spell also happened to be an Artifact Destruction spell, and it worked in the way that they needed it to, to to thread the needle there. Well played by the opponent. On to the next round. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build Magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and every other format you'll see on this channel. They have multiple customizations, so you can view your deck how you want. Text view. Stacks, grid, custom grouping by type, subtype, color, light mode, dark mode. However you want to see your deck, they can provide it for you. My favorite feature is you can choose your set printing, make the deck look exactly how you want it to. The deck screen features expandable sections that show you what tokens your deck makes, your recent change history to the deck, stats about mana curve and opening hand distribution, Mana cost distribution. You can deal out sample hands and even play test the deck. Island Ponder. You know I'm keeping this one. This site has everything. Follow me on Moxfield.com to keep up with decks I'm playing for the channel and what I'm up to in paper. I'll see you there. I'm on the draw against a Karuga deck. Karuga Awuga. Let's fucking go. Uh, I will keep my hand. Is this a Fires deck? I, I don't know what. Modern deck plays Karuga. I feel like I've seen some tweets about this recently, but don't actually know what the payoff is. Uh, I will try to get up under it with my efficient pressure. Flagstones, okay. I think I want to start with Ren. Get that happening. He's in Pyromancer. I can bin that. It has value in my graveyard, and it's good for Delirium. Buy my land and then attack for one. I wonder if split cards work for Karuga. Like Fire Ice, is that a four mana spell or two two mana spells? And I know within the rules when it costs two and four, but I don't know specifically about deck building. Interesting. I guess we'll find out. Oh, you're a Lotus Field deck. Sacking Flagstones, that's insane. Okay. We can never win this game. I don't know what's about to happen, but it's not something we can beat. There's Argoth. I guess the best thing I can do here is just try to deal damage to my opponent. I'm gonna fetch with Bloodstain Mire. Get another mountain. Lightning bolt them. It's chasing that delirium high. Also grows Tarmogoyf. Back for one. And I'll deal one to them with Ren. I'm literally just trying to deal damage to my opponent right now. And I have no other land for this matchup. God, sacking Flagstone's the Lotus Field is so sick. Flagstone is, is not legal in most formats where Lotus Field is played. God, big to fairy. Okay. That's terrifying. So I can pre-combat Lightning Bolt fairy. See what shakes loose. Another land into the graveyard. Still don't need those. And I'll play Bloodstain Mire from my hand and then Heat to Fairy also. I'll have to beat all my spells and beat all my creatures to keep to Fairy this turn. If they have cards like to Fairy, this might be a value Lotus Field deck. There's some discontinuity stuff that happens in Pioneer that maybe this is inspired by. Rather than going off, yeah, I guess you can't twiddle or hidden strings or anything with Karuga as your companion. Interesting. Okay. Pieces are coming together here. Crypto Command, Counter, and Bounce. Okay. They bounce, Tarmogoyf. I'm going to fetch before I Surveil, in case I want the top card. We can leave it there. If Surveil hits Delirium, then Teferi's dead. That is an enchantment, but I want it. I can also... Oh, I can plus Ren and Six. Okay, yeah. Uh, put this card into my graveyard. Then attack. 
the fairy. That's got to stop. And pick up Urza Saga and play Tarmogoyf. Goyf is 4 or 5 currently. Let's see if we get Fires of Invention or oh, back up to fairy. That's a good one too. Imagine that you just play the full boat up to fairy in this deck. What are you doing if not to fairy stuff? I'll play Urza Saga. And then I'm going to attack Teferi with both my creatures. I can Titania second main who can regrow Fetchland if they commit too much to protecting Teferi now. If they Crypt a Command to tap my squad and bounce Urza Saga, I'm going to become the Joker. That would be such a good play right now. They're floating white mana. What is this, Wandering Emperor? I haven't attacked yet. Memory Deluge, okay. They're just deluging now, trying to find a one mana answer to Tarmogoyf. I guess they only need to answer Dragon's Rage Channeler. But are there, yeah, there is a creature in the graveyard. So, Bolting DRC would save Teferi. No, I still have my, okay, Solitude's good. I still have my Ren activation for the turn as well. Solitude exiling, touch the Spirit Realm. Okay, fair enough. So, one damage to Teferi. I'm going to go for Titania before I decide what I'm going to do with Ren. Hopefully she's just a giant pain in the ass my opponent can't deal with. We buy Wooded Foothills. And I can besage you. Not that I think that matters here. I'm going to put one damage on Teferi. If he wants to tuck Titania, he's going to die for it. Any sweeper just messes me up here. There's no... Okay. One for one removal is not a problem. I will at least get a 5-3 out of this. And it is land from the battlefield, so I can't... Oh, I can besage you here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll save besage you, actually. It's better if I let them take my Titania and then bring it back into play than it is to stop it from ever leaving. Holding the besage you. Good over there. Blood Sun. Okay. Uh, this kills Urza Saga outright. Pretty cool stuff that turns on my delirium and they get to just drop lotus field from hand and teferi has a plus bubble floating and karuga's in hand okay uh their deck just went off karuga can draw at least three cards next turn okay ren and six give me back nothing yet I'm gonna attack teferi with both of my creatures or i'm gonna get cryptic commanded and do no such thing Okay, uh, tap all my creatures and bounce my elemental. That's fine. I can finish off to fairy with lightning bolt and ren activation. Bolt to fairy. The bauble in the graveyard. Minus one on to fairy. And battling the the touch with my Beseju or the blood sun. I think the touch first. Yeah, they've already played two Lotus Fields. This is draw a card for each other permanent you control. All right. I would like you to have one card instead of a zap touch. Get my Titania back, who gets back a fetch land. Ren can get back Beseju, which can take out Blood Sun next turn and get me back into the Urza Saga. Okay, Karuga will draw one card here. There's still a memory deluge in the graveyard, waiting for the flashback. Got a big dig through time, just chilling over here. Eerie. On the full hard cast, horrifying. That will take out Titania and put a damage on Ren, probably. Yep. Oh, I'll fetch in response. Oh, no, I can't. There's a Blood Sun in play. Damn it. They got me. Yeah, I messed that up. I should have got Urza Saga, which would have died instantly to state-based actions and at least given me a 5-3 on the way through. Whoops. Using magic cards in play all around. Turn Beseju to my hand. DRC has to fight. Opponent goes to 9. So 1-2, one, 1-2-3-4-5. Two, one, two, Alright, I'm gonna wait on... on Unholy Heat. Cycling Zagoth Triumph in the end step. After they draw their card, I think now I want to besage you, Blood Sun. I can do the Seasoned Pyromancer thing from the graveyard to chump chump and keep Ren around. 
It leaves unholy heat in my hand for Teferi or something worse. Really wish I'd remembered Blood Sun last turn. I have a 5 3 right now. Data flagstones into their flagstones. Legend rule applies. We got a planes. There is a basic land in this deck somewhere. Casting another Fury. This will put Ren to 1 or kill Ren outright and leave me just on DRC. Okay. I left Ren at 1 for now. What horrible fate will befall me now? Two cards left in your hand. You have gajillions of mana. Okay, Ren's dead. Now I'm in trouble. I already wasn't doing great, but the Ren was keeping me kind of in the mix. I'm going to clear one of these Furies. These Empyromants are in chump mode. Doesn't make sense now. They've got too much going on. And confirm that Fire Ice does work with Karuga, by the way. Which I suppose makes sense. I'll fetch for Sacred Foundry in the end step. Only other one left is Jetmere's Garden. That's definitely better as a cycle. Granite 6, what's up? I needed you. Is their last card Cryptic Command? Maybe just, you know, be out of gas. That would be totally fine, opponent. Turn Urza Saga to my hand. Play Saga. And pass the turn. Seasoned Pyromancer can chump. Get me into Urza Saga. Which I don't know what the end game here is. They called Rock Run Triome now. Why didn't they do that in response to Ren? What if they drew a counterspell? They're just coming for my life total now. That makes sense. If they have another Fire Ice, they can cleanly answer these two 1-1s. One Crypto Command can tap them as well. A lot of things kill me here. And this is exactly 11, which is my life total. Okay, Solitude doesn't kill me. I'll take that. Lock the Fury. And what's my last draw of the game going to be? Reverse the Olvenwald is not the worst of all cards I could draw. I'll try to cast it and see what shakes loose here. What even is there to get? I could get Sokens on, make two blockers, pick it back up. Yeah, I think it's Sokens on actually. Armagoyf is huge, not big enough. Yeah, I'm getting Sokens on and then I'm going to channel it now so I can pick it back up with Ren. And I can block with Saga token or start pulling ahead by getting bigger constructs. That's a cool card to have in the toolbox. Oh, that kills me. Okay. I can't channel Sokens on again and one blocker doesn't save me no matter where I put it. Okay, well that's terrifying. Alpine Moon will help though. Alpine Moon on Lotus Field is good. I want the other Basaju. They've shown me Touch the Spirit Realm and Blood Sun. Jesus, Blood Sun. Tale of Summer is good against Cryptic. Not good against much else. Run a foul doesn't matter. Hitting Needle on Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. Sounds good. I think the Resto Kiki thing can chill. AY or Might actually does have targets. I write Spellbomb, not great. I didn't see them doing any graveyard stuff. And there's there's a plan. Yeah, I'll try it like this. Keep. Keep, 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 keep. Turn one rag. Got the Alpine Moon chilling. Playland of the Void. Okay. That is a card you can put in your deck. Going straight for Stomping Ground here. And casting rag. They need Fury to answer this thing. I guess they could have Dead Gone. Got the Triumph go. I'll take it. And Rag, go get him. We're doing stuff here. What was exiled? What just happened? Oh, it's over here. It's under the Karuga. I was like, where the hell did the card go? Uh, there is a Solitude over there that I clearly can't do anything with. And Dragon's Rage Channeler. 1-1, one, one, get in there. Stomping Ground. In there. Don't need to Alpine Moon yet. Springleaf Drum. Let's me surveil. I want lightning bolt. Yeah, I'll take it. And one, two, three. Yeah, Titania is just a five three here. Not even good. Flagstones. They can fire ice now. No, they can't. They don't have red mana. The lightning bolt. I knew I was drawing. Back with my creatures. Give me something big to cast. Exiled a flagstones. 
into anything with that. I think I am going to play Jetmir's Garden. And then I'll Alpine Moon Lotus Field. Or do I even need to do that now? Or I could let them mid it to the board first. Yeah, I'm going to wait. Because it comes into play tapped. If they put it into play, then I can shut it down after they commit sacking two lands to it. There we go. Because if I name it first, then it comes into play for free. And then if they can answer my moon, they're all set. I think I want to bolt in the end step at this card selection. I don't think I would bolt just for the damage. I'll get rid of Unholy Heat. My plan is to shut down their mana engine and not have to answer things. The wire might that's a sweet one. Back first. If I can pick up a Fury or some dope card from their deck. I got exactly Fury from their deck. That's the card I wanted. Okay, they just scooped up to the Fury. Okay. Didn't even have to show them Alpine Moon. That's generous. Don't think anything changes in my sideboard. I didn't get any new information I didn't have before. Oh, yes, I did. I, I know they have Leyline. But my Besejus are already in. Titania is just a one of that's part of a tutor package. I don't have any answers to Leyline that aren't already in my deck. I guess technically with a Ragavan treasure, I could prismatic ending a Leyline, but I don't think we're going that deep. Yeah, this is my deck. Let's go. I've got the moon. I've got the rag. This is what I want in an opening hand. Keep it. Got their ley line. They've got two ley lines. Okay. The second ley line kind of rules. I mean, the first one does what it does. The second one is like, they discarded a card. Shocked in Sacred Foundry. They must have the fire this game. There's a saga. Fascinating. Okay, I'm fired. I think... And Tarmogoyf is 1-2. They sack these two lands, it's 2-3. Yeah, I think getting Tarmogoyf happening is the way to go. Because if they Lotus Field here, that's a turn off where I can Saga play the other Goyf and Moon them. There's the field. Don't float any mana, just let them die. Okay, cool. And float off this, right? I always forget. Sack two lands. Yeah, it doesn't say untapped lands. There's the Saga. Get in there. Tarmogoyf, get in there. Back with the two damage Tarmogoyf. Then the hammer. Alpine Moon on Lotus Field. Okay, where are we here? If they can answer Alpine Moon, then that'll... That won't necessarily make Goyf bigger. Oh wow, they've had enough! My sideboard thing was better than their sideboard thing. Alpine Moon versus Leyline. GG's. On to the next round. You come here to level up at Magic. To level up as a software engineer, check out the new YouTube series Dev Better, hosted by the founder of 7 Factor Software and Magic player, Jeremy Duvall. 7 Factor's small teams of high-performing engineers build custom mobile apps, APIs, and highly scalable systems for Fortune 500 companies and ambitious startups with great ideas. If you'd like to hire 7 Factor, or maybe join their team, contact them through their website at 7factor.io. And don't forget to subscribe to 7 Factor's YouTube for every episode of Dev Better. On the draw for round three, can't keep this one lander with Saga. Send it. Uh, I'll keep this one, yeah. Uh, Rag and Spring Leaf Drum will get me off the ground. I'm going to send, I think, Pyrite Spell Bomb to the bottom. I mean, Pyrite and Soul Guide both draw cards, but I have one Soul Guide Lantern effect in my deck, and I have Pyrite Spell Bomb is like my ninth best burn spell. Uh oh. Rag mirror. Okay, that saga makes things a little more interesting. I will put my rag in front of theirs. Yeah, I guess I have to do this. Wow, that sucks. Here I was trying to bully my opponent with Ragavan. This is a huge play draw match because if I'm on the play, I can cast Ren and Six next turn and kill their rag. Don't do red spells. DRC Lightning Bolt. Yep. Yeah. The nuts. Getting obliterated. I mean, this is one of the real tests of the deck. We're playing against the one of the number one decks in modern right now. Is it Merktide? Exile to Stomping Ground. I needed that. Okay. And ended up in the right place anyway. If they have Spell Pierce and cast it off of this treasure, that's a very good start for them. 
if they don't, they're down to two cards in hand. They can eliminate Ragaban here. They have three card types. If they can get another one, Ren's dead. If they have a burn spell, Ren's dead. Uh, that is the third card or fourth card type. And Soul Guide Lantern can take them off Delirium and slow down Murktide Regent. So I mean, we're not, not out of this yet. Hitting that green source last turn to clear Rag was a pretty big deal. Oh god, they could Murktide right now. Just shocked in that Steam Fence. They either have a Counterspell or a Murktide Regent. And they would have to attack first, so we, we don't know which one it is yet. I guess even, like, consider, you would shock in. You wouldn't... Two life is worth less than a treasure token currently. I've been bobbled. There are three card types in my graveyard. I drew Traverse. I kind of want to hang a Traverse out there, make it look like I'm struggling. I don't know if this is good enough to bait a counter spell, but if they have spell pierce, they might fire it off. I'm trying to resolve Soul Guide Lantern, Urza Saga. The trick didn't work. That does get me to four card types, though. A uh, Springleaf Drum next. And all right, did your patience pay off, or are you holding up something other than counter spell? Okay, we're in there. Exile Expressive Iteration. Still have Delirium because they had five card types. Just gonna zap their graveyard. But they shocked in this land. If they consider in the end step, I'll save the thing for them. Okay. I'm just gonna bomb now. They might be able to just EI and get it back right away, but this slows down Murktide and takes them off Delirium, if only temporary. Oh, dashing Ragavan. That's really good. Zelda Mountain. That's fine. I didn't want that. I picked up Rag. Two cards in their hand plus Ragavan. Oh, sick. I was gonna traverse for Saga this turn, but then I drew Saga. What do I do with that information? I could put a traverse on the stack, see if they're worried about it. Yeah, I'll try this. They know I have forest, so they know they're not going to screw me out of a land drop here. But if I can suss out a counter spell. Okay, so can Zahn. Titania? Do I want Titania here? She's really expensive. Could get Tarmogoyf, but am I ever going to have room to deploy that thing? Not really. Get my own rag. Maybe it's Season Pyromancer. I'll grab that. And if I play the second Saga now, I can go 1, 2, Construct, Untap, 1, 2, Construct. And use Springleaf Drum to keep the constructs coming. Okay. I will play the other Saga. Blood Moon is the punish here. They can also just keep the pressure on with any sort of removal spells. Lightning Bolt and whatever. If they dash Rag, then they definitely have one. I'm still going to make them do it. Okay, here is Construct. Let's see, your Unholy Heat. There's Unholy Heat. I don't need to float mana. They know. Both cards in my hand. I'm not bluffing anything. And they hit another DRC. Bummer. That's a real card that they like for their deck. Rag returns to their hand. Draw for turn. Lightning Bolt's a good one. One, two. Take a construct with the one that's leaving. They're heating this now. I'll let them surveil first and then decide what I'm doing here. Are delirious now. A float of red. That dies. I have a tutor. Zern Orb can keep me alive. I don't know if that's actually helpful. I write Spell Bomb. I don't have the red to execute on that. I think I have to take Zern Orb here. Then make a 3-3. Three, three. I can get in front of the Ragavan. I go to 6 from the Flyers. They have one card other than Ragavan left in their hand. Ragavan on the normal cast, not a dash here. I go to three. I can sack the saga for free, because it's dying anyway. And then we'll see what happens here. My Shadow Spear, unfortunately, in the sideboard. Soul Guide Lantern already used. Draw for turn. Uh, that's a second Lightning Bolt. That's actually great. Make a Construct. Sacrifice Saga. Go to five. 
That's dying anyway. Get a tutor. A wire might and gain me life. I think I need the redraw of Bobble. So Pirate's Bell Bomb is also tempting. I do get an, an attack. I get Spell Bomb. Now I get to attack if I get Haywire Might. Yeah, I want Might. Because that one, if even if they kill it, I'm still alive. Attack for 5, jumping with Rag. That one ought to play. I like that. And then we're going to go to their turn. And I'm going to Bolt before they draw. Bolt a DRC now before they can draw another Counterspell. And bolt the other one now before they draw a counterspell. Okay, those are both bolted. I'm at 5 with 11 power in play. CPZ in hand, and they know that. Looks like a Murktide regent coming my way. It is a Murktide. It's only 6-6. Six, six. Another rag, okay. Makes sense they were willing to trade off the first one so it readily. Any artifact lets me trade with Murktide. Lightning bolt. If they block, Bolt finishes it off. I'm going to attack with my Constructs. Constructs get in. They take 5. Second main, Lightning Bolt, the Murktide. I can still cast Pyromancer here. Counterspell, you got it. And red, 1, red. He's in Pyromancer. Draw 2 cards. Holy Heat, okay. I can sack lands to stay alive here. Going all in, but I was there anyway. Durin Orb, sack the forest. I'm at 7, I go to 1. My Unholy Heat does kill their Murktide unless they have another one. DRC is a flyer. Okay. So what are they spending mana on? They just sacked their treasure. Oh, they don't want Haywire Might to have a target. That's fair. Okay, do I have a win now? I attack with my 4-4. Four, four. Have to block. They don't have to, but they will. I attack with the 4-4. Four, four. Ragavan goes to Chump Town. Okay, and then I can play Tarmogoyf and Unholy Heat. Tarmogoyf, eat the 6-6, six, six, sack all my lands, be alive, and then they're dead on the backswing. Eat the 6-6. Six, six. And I'm dead to bolt anyway. We got the FFS in the chat. Yeah, this has been a great game. Uh, yeah, sacking my lands now doesn't matter. I guess I have to do it, so might as well do it. They have to draw a lightning bolt to win here, I think. Wow, that was a great game. Zurin Orb, what's up? Okay. If... This isn't a prismatic ending matchup. I don't know what is. Unlicensed hearse, let's go. Run a foul, absolutely. Fury. They might be a Blood Moon deck. Or I know they are a Blood Moon deck. It's just if they go for it or not. Haywire Might answers Blood Moon. Pirate Spell Bomb is removal. Yeah, this this top end stuff is just the the goofiest thing the deck is doing. And maybe it's my bias for hyper lean strategies in decks like this, but that's going to be the stuff that I chop basically every time with, with sideboarding. Slim down on a bobble. Well, guide lantern and two hearses. That's a lot of good stuff. Bail is like fine. It, when you punch through a counter spell, you see, feel like a genius, but when it rots in your hand while you're dying to red creatures, it's terrible. Shave another bobble. I guess Traverse isn't as good if cutting the goofy stuff. Do I need Pyrite Spell Bomb? That only kills Ragavan reliably in their deck. And I'm bringing in multiple removal spells. Engineered Explosives. Do I have room for this? I mean, the cards. The card can line up well. Is it what I'm actually doing? Is that better than Prismatic Ending? Probably not, because a lot of my stuff costs one also. Yeah, I think I'd rather rely on point-and-click removal than a conditional sweeper. Let's do it. Okay, here's Rag. I'm going to keep. I have the turn one prismatic ending if they turn one Rag again. They did not. Ooh, multi-Rag bonus. 
I'm going to get the, the Sacred Foundry here. And if they lined up a burn spell, untap, play something line, I have the second rag. Or if they try to put Ledger Shredder in front of it, I can end it on curve. Invent's tapped. They're not answering rag right now. Okay, just going to attack first. And they can bolt now. It taps them out of counter spell. Okay, Ragavan is dead. Urza Saga Unlicensed Hearse is how I'm going to do this. If they curve into Blood Moon here, then the Saga is a huge punish. Oh god, do you have Spell Pierce? Yes, so. Oh, Spell Snare. Okay, that's fine. Less disappointed in that one. That one was going to get the Tarmogoy for whatever I did this turn, the Ren. Uh, spell Pierce also gets Ren. Aggressive Iteration. Okay. Found Basic Island. I think I just want to do Saga stuff here. I fetch a mountain now and then just pass. I can get Soul Guide Lantern this turn if they don't do Murktide stuff before then. Invents, this could be a Murktide if they shock this in. That's what's happening. Okay. They did shock it in, but it looks like Counterspell or Dress Down, not Murktide. Fine with all of that. I'm gonna get the Soul Guide Lantern. Beat up the graveyard. Like a dress down. Yep. It's fine. Still gonna make you have it. Soul Guide Lantern. Exile. Uh, they have two of everything. I guess I'll take Expressive Iteration. Just to make a point. The point is that I don't like that card. And I can traverse the Olvenwald for whatever I want currently. I am delirious. So I will do that. And seek out an Urza Saga. Yeah, let's get the next round going. I'm going to let Dress Down hit the graveyard. They didn't have Murktide last turn. Do I want to mess around and find out? I don't think I do. EI. They're beginning the rebuild process. Found a DRC. I can kill that. A lowly 1-1. One, one. Bobble found a different card type. Straight up to three card types. And Instant is not one of them. So the counter spell they're representing could get me. Drawing from Bobble, I draw, oh, they know about this Saga, might as well run that out. Don't know about this Prismatic Ending, I will point at their creature and see what they want to do about it. If they counter this, I'm going to dash Rag, or no I won't because then they'll have a 3-3. Okay, I can dash Rag and then also Tarmogoyf if it connects, or just jam the 5-6 the Goyf Daddy. I think I like dashing rag. This does the most if it works. Didn't work. It's fine. It's an unholy heat out of the way for Tarmogoyf. And they're back in the Murktide Regent range. Maybe I'm too worried about Murktide from my legacy play. I feel like the modern lists aren't even playing for that anymore. It's like two. Yeah, I might be giving that too much respect. Bloodstained Mire. One, one, two. I can't Tarmogoyf and Activate Saga. They've been holding up a lot of spells here. I think I'd rather Unholy Heat on their turn and make them answer the Saga before I start testing with Tarmogoyf. Heat in the upkeep. Didn't save it. Doesn't mean they couldn't. Means they didn't. A lot of lands over there. I make a Construct and fetch for Stomping Ground. My only basic forest is already in play. Getting basic mountain doesn't help against Blood Moon. Construct time. Do we have another dress down over there? Doesn't look like it. AYR might spring leaf drum bobble. Or I could grab the Zurin orb. I don't think I'm in that racing situation. Just take bobble. And attack for three. We're getting a fetch now. I think they were waiting for me to get Shadow Spear and commit the mana. Yeah, that's what happened there. Okay. Dress down removes my constructs again. Heal. And I'm going to use Bobble to manipulate my own draw step. An unlicensed hearse on top of my deck. Okay, I do want that card. Not going to play Tarmogoyf right now because it's a 0 1 thanks to Dress Down and dead to every removal spell they have. If I wait until it's a 6 7. Firing off Lightning Bolt in the end step. Pretty good. It must be fueling a Merc Tide at this point. 
I am going to cycle Jetmere's Garden, get Basic Mountain, and cycle that. Ledger Shredder, okay. Ledger Shredder into Murktide, okay. Yep, that certainly happened. Murktide is only 6-6, six, six, I think. Yes, only 6-6, six, six, which means Unholy Heat is live. I'm going to fetch the Basic and cycle in the end step. Through Mountain for that. Not the most helpful thing. Multiple timer goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. I'm going to start with Hearse. See if they have a problem with that. I am going to trigger a Ledger Shredder this turn. Ain't shit to be done about it. Discarded Ragavan. And had a Spell Snare. And here's my other Tarmogoyf. They got one card left. Hearse will exile Bobble and. I have all these things in my graveyard too. Bobble and Dress Down. And then I'll pass the turn. I'm at two on board. I don't know how I'm going to win this game. Took a little too long to get going here. All right, I'm dead. Both of these creatures are lethal, and I only have one blocker. In those super late game situations, Veil of Summer would be great, but I would be boarding out a threat or answer to make room for the Veil of Summer, where instead of just casting two threats, I'd have to specifically line up Veil of Summer with another threat. I don't think I'm interested in that. Same deck, going back in. Uh, I'll keep this. It puts them in the position to have the answer to rag or get hit by it. And I can traverse for basic mountain and play the second rag on turn two if they do answer the first one. It puts you under the gun. And if they put a DRC or a rag in front of my rag, I have the bolt. Game vents. Okay. Looks like they do have the answer. Going in. Oh wow, okay. They must be considering or spell snaring. Ooh, a counter spell. I like that spell. Uh, I'm going to traverse to hit my land drop. I suspect they have spell snare here. Verse for mountain. Mountain play soul guide lantern. Which has to exile a card. Yeah, maybe I just wait and hold up bolt. Okay, yeah, I'll just pass. I'm not going to give them a spell snare. It's consider. Being able to jam Tarmogoy for there would have been sick. But they've shown me Spell Snare in their deck. I'm not going to just give them that. Okay, can I connect with Rag twice? I certainly cannot. Uh, they are not able to counter Season Pyromancer with what I have right now. If I discard Lightning Bolt and Ragavan, I'm going to get the Sacred Foundry. My white cards are in the deck. It can't Spell Snare or Spell Pierce, Season Pyromancer, and it can gain value while doing other stuff. Discard Bolt, and I think Rag is worse than Soul Guide Lantern. Bobble. Bobble them. Give a DRC on top. Uh, yeah, they can't. They can't Merc Tide with what they have, and I don't care if they do because they have the Run of Foul. I'm not going to shove Soul Guide Lantern into a Spell Pierce. They've been the DRC. Not interested. I get to draw from Bobble. Fury, always happy to find that one. I kind of hope they do just jam a Merc Tide. Ragavan, I've got an army in front of that thing. DRC, okay. If I draw a land right now, we are so in business. Come on, land. Prismatic ending. Bummer. Okay. Prismatic end the rag. And soul guide lantern. Just make sure this Dragon's Rage Chandler doesn't get rowdy in combat. Exile. It's all creatures and instants. Take one of the creatures. And I'll offer the trade with everything I got. And pass the turn. I still have Murktide covered. Not gonna. I still haven't given them a target for a spell snare. Someday the Tarmogoyf might end up being a bait spell. Like I played, if they Merc Tide on this turn, leaving up counter spell mana, I might play the, the Goyf on mine. Okay, they want the blocker. This will give them Delirium. I hope they do find a Merc Tide. I'd take a Ledger Shredder too. I'm not greedy. 
is something that dies cleanly to run afoul. Misty Rainforest was the find, and they didn't use it. I'll go to my turn. I have my own DRC. I'm going to attack with all my creatures. If they block, I can bust Soul Guide Lantern, and their creature dies. Okay, they blocked my 2 2. Holy Heat on Season Pyromancer, that's fine. Build a Ledger Shredder. Their life total continues to reduce. And I'll play DRC now. Mine's a 3 3, yours is not. Never casting this Tarmogoyf. Team Vents tapped. My lag has me a full 10 minutes behind my opponent, even though I'm playing perfectly fast. Unholy Heat's a great draw. I'm going to attack. If they can get Delirium mid combat, I'll kill their thing. Otherwise, they'll just take 5. They don't exactly have tons of life to play with here. Okay, they're at 4. Heal. I'll just pass the turn again. Ragavan on the dash. Okay. I think I want to fight the Ragavan here with Unholy Heat. If they counter Unholy Heat, I'm actually going to leave that on top because it's not a big deal if they cast it. Like, if they counterspell this Unholy Heat, they get Prismatic Ending, which they can then spend their treasure token moving my DRC. Also clears this card that I don't really want from the top of my deck. And maybe makes the way for Fury, which wins the game. And it's a good card for me if they don't counter there. Exiling my DRC. If they get Delirium, I can run them a foul. End step. They have a land. Okay. I'll go to my turn. Another Goyf. Back with my creatures. Can't go to one here, whether you have Delirium or not. Tarmogoyf. Let's see, that spell snare I've been playing around the whole game. Yep, there's the snare. You have two of them. I've been waiting. Alright, Goyf's in. I can kill a Murktide. Consider, with two cards in their hand, this fetch land would put them to dead to elemental. They left their card on top with Consider. They don't have Delirium. Wave's too big for Unholy Heat at the moment. And they're done. Okay. What a scrappy match. And taking Murktide into the grind phase of the game, really picking apart their stuff, that is a, an important box for a deck to check in this format. And we just checked it. Let's go. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards. And you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. On the draw against Kahira in round 4, I'm going to keep. Got Ren in 6. Not much else going on though, I must admit. Dagoth Triome. This could be a five color soup control deck. Yeah, if they just slam their own Ren here, probably in some trouble. Yeah, this mana does cast Ren. Cool. I'm going to fetch in response and get a stomping ground. Okay, Ren battle. I have my Kiki Jiki and Traverse though. If I can get Delirium and get where we want to go, uh, the temptation. But I've fallen for this before. I'm just going to get my Ren down and wait till Goyf is a little bigger. Let's go Ren Mirrors. They have blue mana in their deck. Not a surprise from a Kahira strategy. Don't have white currently, which is good for me. I'm going to go for a Tarmogoyf here and see what happens with that. Uh, what happens with that is a super awkward can't fetch because Ren is in play. 0-1 Goyf. Gotta leave my fetch land up. Keep Tarmogoyf from just dying to a one-point ping. The most shameful death a Tarmogoyf can hold. Math. Yeah, that's a good card. I've heard. Fetch for my Sacred Foundry tapped. The only way I'm ever going to win this game is by Kiki comboing. That's probably not great. They're an orb. Uh, not actually helpful. Reverse puts a sorcery in my graveyard. 
Yeah, I'm just in a tough spot here. Ren, pick up the Bloodstained Mire. Play the Bloodstained Mire. Passes are an orb. Might as well traverse. And this gives up information for next game, but if it gives me a chance in this game, I'm going to take it. Makes Goyf a little bigger. There's one mountain and one Jetmere's Garden left in my deck to fetch for. And they're doing Omnath stuff. Every cool little thing we did versus is it Merktide to grind a little bit of advantage here and there. Just not a, an option against the Omnath decks. Just forget it, kid. You're done. Uh, Teferi bouncing my Zurin Orb. Okay. Not worried about my Tarmogoyf. They must have a Fury or Solitude to finish that off. Their Ren is up to seven. Ready to party. Omnath attacking my life points directly. And passing with the world's most blatant solitude I've ever seen. Guarded Misty Rainforest. Don't even need it. Just showing off. And I drew more land. Pain. I'll play Zurin Orb. They know about that one. Ooh, Counterspell. I'm not getting Solituded. And now I have a Snowball's Chance at Delirium. I'm going to attack their, to their Ren. I can kill their Teferi with my Ren. Attack Ren. Okay, their Ren is little now. And still, I should have... No, if I kill Teferi first, Ren takes an extra point from Goyf. But if they kill Goyf, then they get an Emblem, which is not beatable. So, little, little give and take on that one. Um, I guess I have to cast Geeky Jeeky now. Just deal with whatever that means. Now that this counter spells out of the mix. Okay. Uh, Kiki Jiki is now face up on the battlefield. Can't counter spell it. Can heat it. Can bolt it. All right. I will at least have a Tarmogoyf to block with now. I'm in my end step. Just gotta hope this is one of those situations where the the Omnath control deck is just has a grip full of lands and isn't actually doing anything. Opium. The Kraken fetches for mana though. Must have something to do with it. Face the Mind Sculptor. Yikes. This is exactly the type of deck I would be playing in a modern tournament. Right, I'm gonna copy Goyf before it's gone. They bounced it with Jace. I'll get a bonus here. This will keep Omnath off my back. Put these uh, four color soup leaning like blue white with splash colors. That is generally where I want to be as a magic player. Okay, they're solituding my. Kijiki. All right. Fake Goyf will go away anyway. They can't be too worried about that one. Fake Goyf goes away. Another real Goyf. Ren can deal one to Jace. I think that's more useful than. Anything else it might do here. They're going to be bouncing my creatures. I want it to hurt. Here's Goyf. And surprise different Goyf. I don't have Delirium. Nothing to be done there. And now I'm just F6 to letting it happen. Whatever happens. Brainstorm with Jace. Or no, they're plussing with Jace. Okay. Getting it up out of dead to Ren range. Makes sense. Ren picked up Misty Rainforest. There's the Misty Rainforest. They are fetching for mana. Grabbing a Triumph is interesting. I would leave my Triumphs in my deck here. You clearly don't need land drops. You don't need mana. Fetched and deployed the Hira. And their creatures are still smaller than Tarmogoyf. How about some relevant spell? Uh, that's not a spell, but it is relevant. If I attack both Planeswalkers with both creatures, they can double block one of my Goyfs and then crack back on my Ren. I don't even mind. I'm going to attack Jace, which Magic Online is saying is my opponent, which is kind of true. Attacking Jace with both creatures. Let's just demand some blocks here. God, what's happening? Dress down. Oh, no. All right. That's an absolute obliteration of my life. Yep, dress down. Powerful effect here. I am finally delirious, though. Might not be useful anymore. First, the Olvenwald. Go find. Resto Angel doesn't help anymore. Uh, Titania. You could still do something. My Zurin Orb is in the graveyard. But I can grab Titania for next turn. Five. 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13. If I play Titania now, alongside a fetch land, it slows down Urza Saga, but Saga's not winning this game anyway. I don't have any fetchable lands left. My opponent doesn't need to know that. All right, I'll just put the biggest mama I can on the board. And they have the counter spell anyway. Okay. Pose technically not dead. Oh, I am dead. When I'm playing decks like my opponents, these big control decks, especially ones with Omnath, this sort of matchup is exactly what I'm looking for. All you gotta do is stay alive. There's no combo kill coming. There's no particular blitz other than like turn one Ragavan. It's not like hammer or something that can, or burn that can really just put the hurt on you. It doesn't come out that fast and it doesn't go that big in the late game. And the binary is just, is my life total high enough to do what I want to do or not? And if not, how do I stop it? There's Resto, Kiki Jiki long gone. All right, we're done. What do I even do in this matchup? I can bring in Fury, I guess. Prismatic ending can hit Ren. I could pinning needle a Jace, but this is a, a tough scene. Bale of Summer, we did see Counterspell, and this matchup's a lot slower than the last one we played where I didn't like it. Once again, Kiki Resto are just awkward cards. And Kiki's super awkward. Resto saving Tarmogoyf is interesting. A wire might doesn't matter. Soul Guide Lantern. I don't think they're using their graveyard. Oh, they have Ren and Six, of course. But I'm choosing to battle that on a different axis than the graveyard. Do I want Unlicensed Hearse instead of Prismatic Ending? I don't think so. And tutoring up the Soul Guide Lantern could turn off a Retrace endgame. I think I just don't want the game to go there. And that's my plan. I'm just going to try to get under my opponent and hurt them before they get too set up. Just really hard to do against an opponent with eight pitch free removal spells. Yikes. The sand is aggressively medium. I have to send it. Okay, this one's actually a lot better. I'll keep this and bottom. I think it's traverse. In heat can challenge a wren, kind of. The so Zuran Orb is not really part of the plan. All right, Zuran Orb's on the bottom. I could just traverse now. But I can also traverse next turn. Yeah, it's fine. Just to win swept teeth from the opponent. And I get a stomping ground. That mirrors garden. Not exactly what I want. But it's cool that it's around. I can I'm actually gonna traverse for a basic now. Because that way I can let my first saga come to fruition without stepping on my second one. Because I don't have enough mana right now to, to jump from one saga to the next. Sacred Foundry, shocked it in. Looks like a Ren to me. Oh, Beseju, sure. Would like to use this. I'll put Sacred Foundry into play. Okay, Beseju's not bad. Kind of makes me regret wasting my reverse to get a land, but it's fine. I have another one of these ready. I can cycle Garden. If they Teferi here, I can heat it and then. Move on with my life. That is annoying. Oh, they just popped Kahira in their hand. That's cool. End step cycle garden. Through a drag through a channeler. That's great. That lets me add to my board while still doing saga stuff. BRC get in. I'm at hardcast fury levels of mana now. If they just like shove Omnath this turn, I can fury it next turn. Or when Saga, no, Saga's already in the graveyard. I will not have Delirium that I know of. Can't count on Heat to clear an Omnath. Okay, there's Omnath. They are just slamming it, putting a 4 4 in front of what I'm doing. End step, make a construct. I'm probably just going to cast Fury this turn. Ooh, if I make a construct, itch cast Fury, and then dash Ragavan, is that better than having. I don't think so. Yeah, I'm just going to float mana here. And I'm not going to give them a two for one that I don't have to give them. Oh, I can get I write spell bomb, draw a card, unholy heat, then dash ragaban. Oh shit, could I have made it? I could have made a construct and made that play. Or Mishra's bobble is does the same thing for free. Yeah, I messed up here. 
Fisher's bobble. Bobble you. That gives me delirium. You have dress down on top. Okay. Accidentally glad that I made the wrong play. Tapping Omnath. I will... I'll bottom the second heat. Or no, I'll leave it on top. That'll be good someday. And dash Ragavan. And dress down is the card that Ragavan flips. Could cast that to draw a card. I lose my 1-1. One, one. Do I care about a 1-1? One, one? Do I care about the treasure? Um... I think I do want to draw a card here. Just straight up. Even Holy Heat on top again. I hope they fix the Ragavan Moto bug. Uh, they did fix the bug. Okay. My opponent LOL'd in the chat. Like, I a card was worth more than a 1 1 on this board. Laugh it up. I'm ready for the next Omnath, which they're clearly not doing this turn. I guess I'm in the dash Ragavan hole now. I can kill an Endurance if it jumps out. I can kill a Subtlety. Dash Rag. Here it comes. Endurance. I will heat this before it doesn't work anymore. Kill that creature. Then my Graveyard's gone. No longer Delirious. Ragavan connects. Give me a Ren and Six. Aggressive Iteration. Don't mind if I do. Red, blue, the eye, uh, traverse to hand, got a long way to go to get delirium again, besage you to the bottom, exile lightning bolt, and I'll play stomping ground, just bolt my opponent. Okay, they're at six. Oh, I guess they could spell pierce, or are we just fetching a, a triumph here? All right. Okay, opponent's at five. I have a fury. They did an omnath last turn. Dace, okay. That cost all their blue mana, so they can't counterspell here. They did a brainstorm. Ren and six, okay. Not a bad card. I'm gonna dash rag first. I'm gonna keep pressuring their life total. They kill rag, then I get to Ren. The rag's dead. Maybe should have just cast Fury there. All good. Yeah, pitching Ren to. Fury seems really bad. Got my basic forest. Play Ren. Try to get back in this thing. Yeah, this Jace is going to be a problem, though. All right. Opponents at four, and they get to go nuts on their turn. Chase the Mind Sculptor. Brainstorm. I'm worried about Omnath. Exactly. I mean, Jace Brainstorm every turn is bad, too, but if Omnath starts to gain them out of... Burn range, it's pretty bad. A Ren for us both. I can answer their Ren with Prismatic Ending, which also puts a Sorcery in my graveyard and gives me Delirium for Reverse. Ooh. Gonna Prismatic Ending Ren. White. If they want to fight over this. They probably shouldn't. Didn't. Good call. I think I want to... Look at what creatures I can tutor for. I can traverse for Ragavan and Dash. He's in Pyromancer. I don't want that. Armor Wife don't want that. Okay. Uh, I think I'm just going to Fury now. They have Counterspell or Dress Down. It's all good. They're going to have those every other turn as well. And if they don't, if I can clear Jace, I actually feel okay about this game. Oh, okay. We're in there. Four damage to Jace. This probably means they're just going to solitude me back and start bashing. But with Jace cleared, got something resembling a chance. Catching in response to my Ren activation. Okay, looks like they're just saving time on that. Okay, solitude does clear my fury and pressure my Ren and gain them life. But solitude is a poor answer to active Titania. They are pressuring Ren. Fortunately, I don't have a Wooded Foothills or a Fetch Land in play to start the chain. I don't have a land in my graveyard to start the Titania chain. I have a Counterspell last turn, and I'm certain they would have used it if they did. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. I'm going to Fetch. This gives me Delirium temporarily. Enough green sources to 
Armagoyf, and Titania. One, three, four, five. I'm going to start with Titania. I think this is the better thing. Cool. Leyline Binding, sure. The Sage is in my deck. I can actually tutor for it with Reverse. I'll get a blowout sometime in the near future with that. Armagoyf, that Gundus 6 7 creature. And I'm going to Ren targeting nothing. And that's my turn. They have another Solitude. I'm in trouble. Step Dress Down is annoying too. That appears to be what they're setting up. Oh, they're Besaging. Yes, I will tutor up Jetmer's Garden. At this point, let's go. Uh, if they're going to start besaging me to strip mine, it's going to have to play into that. Hopefully Titania undoes it big time. Another Solitude will clear my Ren. Gain me a bunch of life. If this besaju trick works, we're in business. If it doesn't, we're in trouble. The Ren's gone. Five card types. Unholy Heat is the draw. First the Olvenwald, please don't endurance me. Grab a Seiju. And I'm gonna kill your Ren and Six right now. We're done doing all this. Counterspell. Wow, they had counterspell and didn't use it. Fascinating. Okay. Um I'll channel Besaju on Leyline Binding right now. Titania returns Sacred Foundry to play. They did shock in that temple garden. Didn't shock in the hallowed fountain. All right, two life well spent. I'm at 23. I can take some hits. Besaju in their hand, which doesn't have a good target currently. Press of iteration. And I'm not acting like I'm ahead in this game, but Titania is in play, which gives me a chance in the universe. No ley line binding. Solves. And I'll fetch to make an elemental. Nothing left to get. Be able to find. Means they know their Besaju's good to rock out here. Third Solitude. That should probably do it. But if I draw Ren and Six, pick up my Besaju, clear their binding again. We're chilling. We got Ren's in my deck. Lightning Bolt. Not great. It can clear one of the Solitudes at least. The pressure off. Uh, I'm not using Besaju's ability because I can't. And you know that. I think it's rude to ask, actually. Uh, destroying Jetmer's Garden is actually bad. Uh, they should destroy Sacred Foundry if they want to eliminate a white source, but giving me Jetmer's Garden in my graveyard, that gives Ren and Six more action. It probably doesn't matter here, but I would probably leave Jetmer's Garden around. Ren and Six. Dragon's Rage Chandler. Pretty much the same thing. Uh, opponents at Ren Emblem. I'm actually good here. We don't need to keep playing. Once they emblem up and have counter spells and EIs forever, we're good. All right, two and two, on to the final round. For the absolute best Magic the Gathering apparel on the market, check out the link in the video description to coalesceapparel.shop and be sure to use the code BOSTONROLL for 10% off when you check out. I'm on the draw with Jetmer's Garden Bauble. I get to see three cards before I miss a land drop. I'll keep this. No companion from my opponent. Burden Catacombs. Already feeling like Yawgmoth. His hand is insane against Yawgmoth. If I get an untapped red source. Jetmir's Garden. Bobble. And let's have a look. Overgrown Tomb. Okay. I did not draw a land. Wall of Roots. Essence Warden. Okay. In the beatdowns. Can I get land? Was never worried. Dragon's Rage Channeler, get in there. And just gonna relax with this card and hold up my removal spells. Okay, they brought Wall of Roots down into bolt range. I like that. I know they have Overgrown Tomb in hand though. Back with a 2 2 Exalted. I'm gonna bolt wall of roots in my end step or in their end step. In the upcoming end step. Two cards in hand, one of them's overgrown tomb, and we're about to see the other one. They're just firing off a fetch here. 
It can't be Yogmoth. It could be... Okay, yeah, Grist is pretty good. Grist resolves. It made an insect with Grist. Our last card in hand is Overgrown too. In the end step, I'm going to Bolt Wall of Root. I get a Surveil. Reverse the Olvenwald. Puts a Sorcery in my graveyard. I think I actually want to bin this. Or if I put it on top, I can tutor for another red source, which kind of hits my land drop while putting a sorcery in the graveyard and giving me another surveil. Yeah, I guess I'll put this on top. Okay, traverse the Olvenwald. I'd love to put a land in my graveyard right now. That would get me delirium. Uh, I am not going to put this in my graveyard. I'm just going to shuffle it away and leave it in my deck for later. That's a good card to have around. Find a mountain. Uh, unholy heat. The ignoble hierarch. Found a land. Put that into the graveyard. I am now delirious. Unholy heat. The grist. And do I want to land? No. Okay. They're down to three 1-1 one, one creatures and a land in their hand. Dogmoth doesn't go off if they draw him. But they can deploy him. Farmagoyf is huge, 6-7. Okay. That flurry of fire worked out pretty well. Overgrown Tomb. They shocked it. They drew Yawgmoth, Jesus. Or it's a Court of Calling. Okay. Court of Calling for Yawgmoth ends up in the same spot. They don't have a huge combo here. They can draw a card with Young Wolf. Basically for free. Sack their insect to shrink young wolf so they can draw another card with wolf here and put another counter on my DRC. Okay, they put a counter on Dragon's Rage Channeler, then Essence sacked Essence Warden to draw another card. They're going deep out here. And then they sacked the final one. Now I wish I kept that land. Uh, Renin 6. This is not bad. By Renin 6, I can pick up a land, then I can kill the young wolf. They're up to five cards again now, just ripping that dog moth from, from empty. Put me in a tough spot. The, the other thing I could do is not Unholy Heat Grist and save that in case they drew Yogg moth. I don't like that though. I'm clearing the young wolf, so they're not a single creature away from going off, and they can just sack it to draw a card but at least it's gone now their six card hand where they were they started last turn with overgrown tomb and no other cards in hand now they're up to seven cards with their combo engine in play uh this deck okay had a young wolf anyway but at least they don't have two okay now they have two great well they can go as deep as they like at least the essence warden is gone Drangle root geist there's three of them now Oh, and we're going to cord for Zulaport Cutthroat and just be done here. Okay. For Blood Artist, same Z's. Okay, well, that's, uh, sometimes you, you play to a certain plan and they do something different. The other thing I guess I could have done there is target Grist with the first Unholy Heat. And if Surveil hits, then I still have... Like, if I hit Delirium off the Surveil off of the first Unholy Heat, then Grist is dead and I'm still holding a Heat in case they draw Yogmoth. And if I miss on that Surveil, I can Heat something else in response and get another look. And as long as the top two cards in my deck are an Artifact or a Land, then it works out the same, but it gives me the out to, to be okay. Yeah, I think I, I was not brave enough. I like Hearse, Shadow Spear, Pithing Needle. I like a lot of stuff for this matchup. Haywire Might can go. Soul Guide Lanterns being replaced by Hearse's. Is going Zurin Orb, Titania a plan here? Or do I want Kiki Resto? Do I want neither? And I just want to be like control deck. But being a control deck, or yeah, trying to get through on the ground with. Ragavans versus the deck with four copies of Young Wolf in it. Tough sell. They're going to bring in Endurances, which make all my Delirium stuff a little worse. If I want to be 
look a little different here. In Ragavan's so bad against Young Wolf, but Ragavan's also good against most other things. So if I cut like if I cut all of the rags, I get back Zuranorb and Restoration Angel and Titania. Can I get Kiki in here too? I'm running out of time to figure this out. I want at least one bobble. I'm gonna stop here. Resto Fury, Resto Season Pyromancer, Resto just being a flying creature. All of that is good enough. I will keep the sand. I've got Fury, I've got a ramp spell. Turn one Dragon's Rage Channeler. Do it. Get the stomping ground. And play Channeler. Let's go. Ducked an overgrown tomb. Birds of Paradise. That will die very soon. Uh, I'm gonna play Springleaf Drum first. But it's Surveil. Second Dragon's Rage Channeler. I will graveyard that. It's more delirium. Sacred Foundry. I'll shock that in and bolt this bird and then attack. If this surveils an artifact, sorcery, I'm going to keep Tarmogoyf on top. That doesn't help with Delirium, and it does help be a giant body in the game. Get a 2-drop here. Drink a Rootgeist is kind of annoying. Wall of Roots develops better. Drink a Rootgeist, no attack. Fair enough. Tarmogoyf is a 3-4. I'm going to play Baseju and Tarmogoyf. I can cast Fury next turn. Let's hope it's good by then. They just drop out like two mana dorks here. That would be great. A Seiju and passing the turn. Boring. Versus Saga. Love to see that. I'm going to attack with Tarmogoyf. See if they block. If they do, Fury gets to mop this thing up permanently. Oh, they're going to Endurance and double block. Okay, that works out the same. That's fine. I just lose Tarmogoyf. They take out. Oh, wait, no. Tarmogoyf. Yeah, this does work out the same because they have two cards, two types in their graveyard. No, I, I don't get to kill the Geist. I get to kill the, the Endurance and the front half of the Geist. Oh, they're double blocking. Yes, I needed that. <laughs> uh, sure. Put the Geist first. Put one damage on. Still a damage short. Damn it. Okay. Uh, I'll still clear the Geist, though. Second main, Urza Saga. Yeah, that Endurance was pretty good. As it tends to be. Well, here's Fury anyway. That Goyf was 1.2 small there. Moving a Strangle Root Geist forever feels good though. Maybe I'm supposed to kill Endurance because Fury beats Geist in combat. Geist being piece of a combo. I don't know. Yawgmoth is so tricky to play around. If they're on just the, the mopey mid-range creature draw, then killing the Endurance was right. If they're anywhere near a Yawgmoth, that then... Killing the Geist is right. I'd like to just draw a Lightning Bolt, please. Oh, they're attacking. Cool. Deal. I'll take it. Young Wolf. All right. Fury can rumble here. Another Goyf. Okay. That's pretty big. Fury, get in there. Don't have any blocks here. Well, no, like, blocks that kill my creature. They have lots of blocks. The ability to block, strictly speaking. Second main, I'm going to Tarmogoyf. And I think I'm going to keep Sokanzan in my hand. I might need that. It's not really doing much in play. I have the Springleaf Drum. Make Constructs with. Goyf is 2-3 still. That's big enough to tangle with any of these undying creatures. Oh, there's big stupid asshole face. They can now draw as many cards as they'd like. At the cost of one life point each. They still have their land drop for the turn. They just need a court of calling somewhere in their top. 14 cards. Yep, I'm getting comboed out here. The pithing needles one turn away. Yeah, there's a land. If there's a court of calling anywhere, we're dead. They're already tapping Young Wolf, which is only means one thing. Me without a lightning bolt. Okay. Guess let's see what they get first. Like, there's any other choice. Yep, no graveyard hate, no burn spells. Yeah, that game won. Ripping the Yogg and me. Not, I'm not going to complain about them ripping Yogg because I didn't play to all my outs, which was eat Grist first and see if Delirium hits. And then I can make the same play that I ended up making if it misses. And I'm just 
protect it if it doesn't. Okay. Yagma seems like a tough matchup for this deck. So does the, the four color control. But we did get some sweet interactive nickel and dime games early on in the league. I really don't like the Kiki Resto thing. I identified it as probably too cute in the, the deck tech. It was just the clunkiest thing and easy to sideboard out. It wasn't in the game for a lot of games twos and threes, which I don't know. Maybe that's on me. I didn't give it a chance, but just when you need to bring in five or six cards for a matchup, there's some number of like one bauble and then some number of these saga bullets aren't going to be good in every matchup. But after that, it's just it's this stuff that's that's awkward and clunky. The Zern Orb did win us a game just on life gain mode. It never went off with Titania, but it is in that combo is at least easier to assemble because it's one traverse the Olvenwald and one Urza Saga gets you going versus two traverses plus nine mana. An 11 mana combo that your opponent can see coming because you have to reveal the Resto or the Kiki to traverse. You could at least traverse for Titania and cast her with Zern Orb already in play pretty smoothly and they don't have warning that it's going to happen i think you'd be better off with the the kiki and resto slots just being some other cards maybe just two main deck furies one felt like the correct number of season pyromancer you can get it when you want it and when you don't want it you don't have to worry about it we're not on four ragavan either or four saga like maybe kiki resto should just be one fury one urza saga do that I feel like the deck is well constructed. The plan is making sense. Everything in the sideboard was nice. It's it's exactly it's these two slots down here. The I think this is too cute. I think Traverse is doing enough even without a combo kill. If you want a combo kill, use Titania Zuran Orb. And Zuran Orb at least has text in burn matchups and like we saw against Is it just get us just over the finish line. I think we should max out on Saga though. We are a Saga deck. And we're not playing the full boat of them. The fourth saga is also another way to get Zuran Orb, which overlaps with the Titania, which is your top end with Traverse. And if you're not going that hard on Traverse, like if you don't have Kiki Resto kind of stuff going on, you could even just play three of those and get another slot. I know Ronnie said he was building, wanted to make a Traverse Delirium deck, and that was kind of the exercise here. But I think that, Ronnie, you might be in a little bit of a heart before the horse situation where you wanted to build around Traverse and then you thought of cool things to Traverse for and then you tried to fill in the other 54 cards where you should look at the really cool, interactive, grindy Ren and Six Urza Saga deck that you have in front of you and then figure out what Traverse is doing for it. Traversing for Baseju, so Kenzan, Urza Saga, that all came up. I love the Traverses. I don't think you need four of them, and I don't think you want Kiki Resto. This deck was a delight to play, a lot of fun little interactions, and really squeezing every drop of value out of every card you have. That is magic that I like to play, and I think this deck is good. I, th I think you're, you're just a little cute in the top end of it. And that's how I feel about that. Ronnie, thank you for sharing this deck with me and the channel. Everybody else, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Patreon. And I'll see you next time. I'm out of here.